What exactly is the dot product and how do you calculate it? In this video, I'm going to show you an easy way to visualize and understand the dot product, plus how to calculate it. So let's get right into it. When we hear the word product, we know right away that something is being multiplied. We already know how to multiply two numbers or scalars together, such as 2 times 4. This will give us another scalar as our answer. We can also multiply a number times a vector, such as 2 times 2 comma 1 comma negative 8. And this will give us another vector, 4 comma 2 comma negative 16. Now, how do you multiply two vectors together? Turns out there are actually two ways of doing this. They are the cross product and the dot product. The cross product multiplies two vectors together and gives us another vector as the answer. This is why it's also called the vector product. And the dot product also multiplies two vectors together, but this time it gives us a scalar as the answer. This is why it's also known as the scalar product. I've made a separate video about the cross product and I'll link it here, but I'm going to focus on the dot product in this video. Consider two vectors, vector A and vector B, and both vectors have x and y coordinates. The dot product of A and B is equal to ax times bx plus ay times by. Now let's say vector a is equal to 4 comma 0 and vector b is equal to 2 comma 3. And the angle between a and b is 56.3 degrees. Here is how we would visualize the dot product. a dot b is the vector a times the component of b that is parallel to a. That's these two vectors here times each other. We can also think of it as a times the shadow that b casts on a with A being the blue vector and the shadow of B being the purple vector. Here's another visual representation of it. We can look at it as B times the component of A that's parallel to B. Or in other words, B times the shadow that A casts on B. And that's pretty much it. In a nutshell, that is the visual representation of the dot product. But how do we put this visual representation into a mathematical formula? Well. We know that the magnitude of A is written as A enclosed in two upright bars. And we know from trigonometry that this component of B is written as the magnitude of B times cos theta. This gives us the other mathematical equation for the dot product. So to calculate the dot product in this case, we know that the magnitude of A is equal to the square root of 4 squared, which equals 4. And the magnitude of B is the square root of 2 squared plus 3 squared, which gives us root 13. We also know that theta is equal to 56.3 degrees. Putting these numbers into our equation gives us the number 8. So 8 is our dot product. Using our equation from earlier, that is, a dot b is equal to ax bx plus ay by, gives us the following. 4 times 2 plus 0 times 3. And as you can see, our answer is also 8. We've multiplied two vectors together and gotten a scalar as an answer. Now, these two equations together are very useful. We can use them to solve for unknowns. Let's say that we didn't know what theta was. We can set both equations equal to each other and then rearrange to solve for theta. Doing so in this case would give us the arc cosine of 4 times 2 plus 0 times 3 divided by 4 times root 13. As you can see, our answer is 56.3 degrees. Now, there's another thing that we can conclude from these two equations. The cosine of 90 degrees is zero. This means that if the angle between the two vectors is 90 degrees, the dot product will therefore be zero. So if you find that in your calculation, your dot product is zero, this just means that the two vectors are perpendicular to each other or orthogonal. Now, where is the dot product actually used? Well, the dot product has a lot of useful applications in engineering, mathematics, and physics. Let's consider a physics example. In physics, power is the rate at which work is done or in other words, the force times the speed. More specifically, the dot product of the force and the velocity. Consider this example here. We have someone pulling a box at a force of 500 newtons, 30 degrees above the ground, and he's pulling that box at a speed of one meter per second. What we wanna know is how powerfully is he pulling the box? Calculating the power is the simple case of F dot V. In other words, V times the parallel component of F. Looking at the force, we see that it has both an x component and a y component. In this example, the y component of the force is completely useless to us in determining the power. We're only interested in the x component because that is the component that's parallel to v. 
With our understanding of the dot product, we can use this to solve for power. The power, f dot v, is equal to v times f cos theta. In this case, theta is 30 degrees. Putting our numbers in, we get 433 watts. And remember, this quantity has no direction. It's a scalar. That is, it is the scalar product, or dot product, of f and v. Let's say you were given a similar problem, except f and v were given as Cartesian vectors. Let's say f was 400i plus 300j newtons and v was 2i meters per second. We can just use our other equation for the dot product. f dot v is equal to fx times vx plus fy times vy. And when we put our numbers in, we get 400 times 2 plus 300 times 0, which would give us 800 watts. Now the dot product can be applied to 3D as well. In fact, it can actually be applied to 4D, 5D, and however many dimensions you want. Now let's say you have two three-dimensional vectors, E and F, and E is equal to negative 3, 8, 0, and F is equal to negative 1, 2, and 10. And we'll say both these vectors are directions in meters. So let's see what both these vectors look like. Here they are, and we want to get the dot product of E and F which is equal to e times f times cos theta. And as per our description earlier, e dot f is the vector e times the shadow that f casts on e, or e times the parallel component of f. For simpler calculation, we can simply use the equation e dot f is equal to ex fx plus ey fy plus ez fz. And when we put in the numbers, we get the following answer, 19. Of course, we can extend our understanding of the dot product into 4D as well. In this case, we have two vectors, a and b, and a has the components a1, a2, a3, and a4, and vector b has the components b1, b2, b3, and b4. The dot product will then be a1 times b1 plus a2 times b2 plus a3 times b3 plus a4 times b4. And then in 5D, the dot product would just follow the same trend, with a5 times b5 being the last term, and then in 6D, same thing, so on and so forth. So, let me close by leaving you with a few properties of the dot product. First, the dot product is commutative. That means a dot b is equal to b dot a. Scalars can also factor out in a dot product as shown here, where k is a scalar. The dot product is also distributive as shown, and a vector dot itself is just equal to the magnitude of that vector squared. So that's it for this video on the dot product. Why not try out these questions? I'll leave the answers below in the description.